Hey everyone, it's Guilherme. In today's video, we are going to see the new GLES2 renderer that came with Godot 3.1, its differences in comparison with GLES3, and reasons why you should choose one over the other. And by the end of the video, we're also going to see a side-by-side -side comparison between the two, so you can see their differences during gameplay. Before diving into the demo, we're going to see their differences in this small slide presentation. Keep in mind that this is not technical, this means that we are not going to dive deep into the differences between one over the other. If you want to, you can go and read the release notes on OpenGL website. Here we are going to focus more on what's interesting for us regarding Godot and the games that we are going to develop. Now GLES2 is a renderer that was available in Godot 2.x and is now available once again in Godot 3.1. It has more compatibility with older devices. This means that it is a good option if you are going to target low-end devices, but as a trade-off, you are going to get less detail in your images, which is not always a problem depending on the type of look that you are going with your game. And also, in Godot, you are going to have to use CPU particles. This means that the particles that you are going to be generating are going to be handled by your CPU instead of by your GPU, which leads to less performance if you are using lots and lots of particles in your game. Now, GLES3 was available from Godot 3.0 and it continues to be available in Godot 3.1 as well as GLES2. Though it has less compatibility, it's targeted to more high-end devices, but because of that, you get better detail or quality, which means higher fidelity graphics. Another good thing of using GLES3 is that you can use GPU particles. This means that your particles are going to be handled by your GPU, and as we are going to see in the demo, this means that you can get more performance if you are using lots and lots of particles in your games. Now let's dive into the demo and see this in practice. In Godot 3.1, when you create a new project, you're going to be prompted by this new menu, which is going to ask you to select which render you want to use in your game. As it already tells us, you can change this later, but you have to keep in mind that some changes are going to be required as we're going to see in our demo. Our demo consists of a ship which is going to fly through these rings, which are going to be generated by our map. Let's open our ship scene. Here we have a simple mesh instance and on the end of it, we have these particles which are being emitted by our particles node. You can see that our particles are being emitted and that is because currently our game is running on GLES3 but we are going to change this later. Now let's go back to our game scene and open our ring. Our ring consists of a mesh created using CSG and around our ring we have four omni lights in which the colors are going to be randomly generated during game time. This is going to allow us to see how our ship material is going to behave depending on which color is going to hit it. Now let's play our game and see how it's looking. Now this is our demo running in GLES3 and with it we can see how our ship's materials are reacting to the light and the ship also do some barrels so we can see underneath it and how it's going to react depending on which position it is and of course also our particles which are once again reacting to the lights that are hitting it now we're back in Godot and I'm going to open the ship scene and select its particles if you look in the inspector you can see that the amount of particles that we are emitting is set to 25 I'm going to crank this number up to something like 10,000. This is not going to look good, but it's going to allow us to see the differences between the particles node and the CPU particles. Now I'm going to turn on the FPS monitor in the debug tab. And I'm going to run our game. Now after a few seconds running, you can see that our game maintains a kind of stable FPS of around 30 frames per second. This of course is a little bit off because I am currently recording and my computer is not that powerful. And as you can see sometimes we have these hiccups on our FPS. But overall we tend to maintain around 30 FPS with 10,000 particles being generated every 1.5 seconds. Now let's stop the execution of our game and let's keep this number of 30 FPS in mind. Now what we are going to do is convert our GLES3 game into a GLES2. To do so, there is only one step required which is going to the top right of our Godot editor and selecting GLES2. This is going to prompt us to a confirm dialog in which we are going to confirm that we want to restart our game and it's going to boot once again. Now we are back in the same project, this time using GLES2 and as you can see it's already looking way different than it was. Currently I have the ship scene open and I'm going to open the game scene and here you can already see how different it looks from what we had previously. Our lights look way stronger than they were before and even though this might not seem obvious, this is one of the things that you're going to have to keep in mind when you are switching from one renderer to the other 
you will have to tweak some variables and values to make your game look decent once again. You can just switch your renderer and expect it to look as it was before without making changes. Besides these types of changes, you're also going to have some breaking changes in your game. One of which, and if you paid attention, you already know this, is the particles of our ship, which is not working anymore. Let's open our ship scene. And if we look on our scene tree, you can see that we have a little yellow triangle on the right side of our particles node. If you hover it, you see that GLES2 does not support GPU based particles and we have to convert it into a CPU particles for it to work. To do so, we have to select our node and on the top of our viewport, we have the option to convert our particles into a CPU particles node. Let's do so and select our node and click on emitting and it's now already working as it was before. Now what I'm going to do is once again turn our FPS monitor on and I'm going to run our game once again to see how using the CPU particles node affects the performance of our game. I left the game running for a few seconds and if you remember from the previous example we were hitting around 30 FPS on average. Here our average is 1.5 FPS and we are once again emitting 10,000 particles every 1.5 seconds. This is just to show you how powerful the GPU particles are and depending on the type of game that you are going to develop you have to keep these things in mind to make the right decision between the GLES2 and the GLES3 renders. The options that you have when creating a CPU particle and a GPU particles are pretty much the same which means that you're going to have the same visuals that you would have with the GPU particles and the CPU particles. The difference is obviously on our performance. This is the side-by-side -side comparison between GLES2 and 3. Keep in mind that you could have better visuals on GLES2 if you tweak the variables on our materials, but I wanted to show you something raw so you can see the differences without changes. In conclusion, GLES2 is better if you want more compatibility or you are targeting low-end devices and especially if you're going for mobile. If you're going for mobile, you should be using GLES2 unless you have a really specific case and you know that you should be using GLES3. On the other hand, GLES3 has higher fidelity and if you're targeting higher-end devices, you should go and use that. There is no one size fits all here and each one of them should be used for each different occasion and the demands of the project that you are developing. Another thing to keep in mind is that the CPU particles are also available to 2D even though we showcase here using a 3D environment. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. This project is available on GitHub, so if you want to, you can go ahead and play with it and I'll see you in the next one.